When you print something on a piece of paper, the ink pretty much stays where you put it. With embroidery, stitches may pull a little here or there depending on uh, the stability of the fabric that you're using, um, the backing that you're using, so you may need to compensate for the pull of your stitches. And to do that, we often use either pull compensation or pull offset, and those are both properties available to you in Design Shop. So, there are a couple different ways to uh, look at this and to do that go to properties so I'm going to select um, <clears throat> my element right click go to properties and I'm going to be dealing with uh, multi-stitch line elements so um, the, the pull compensation or pull offset is available for any of your fills or satins anything like that it is not available for walk stitches and then I just go down to pull comp and I'm looking in this area for the things that we're going to be talking about but first I want to talk about what is it and why do you use it so on screen I have a circle and if you've ever done this uh, you'll you'll understand what I'm talking about but uh, when you digitize a circle and then you go and sew it out, you may be surprised that it becomes slightly egg-shaped. It, it elongates, it pulls in depending on the, the stitch direction, and then it pushes out the other way. So what looks like a perfect circle on screen when you sew it out may not be. Why is that? How is that? And how do I compensate for that? So again, when I'm looking at this, typically uh, when I have a perfect circle on screen, if my stitch direction in this case is pretty much straight across, my sides are going to pull in. They're also going to push the opposite direction. So it's going to push out. So when you hear a digitizer talk about compensating for push and pull, this is, this is what we're talking about. So while this may be what I digitized, um, what I may get, so I'm going to move this vector line on top of my stitching. It's not something I recommend you guys do in your design shop, but it makes for better illustrations. This may be what I digitized, but what I get when I sew out may look a little bit more like that. So it pulls in on the sides and it pushes towards the ends. So how do I compensate for that? Well, if I do it manually, I can edit my design and I can kind of go the opposite direction. So I bring in the ends a little bit and I pull out the sides a little bit. Okay, so let me undo a couple times to get this back the way that it was. Pull compensation via properties does kind of the same thing. And there are two parts to it. One is pull compensation which works as a percentage and what that does is it extends the stitch line by whatever percentage you put in here. So if I put 110% pull comp it will extend the stitch lines by 110% so it will measure this line across here and then multiply that by 110%. So because you're dealing with multiplication and you're dealing with percentages, it's going to affect the wider areas far more quickly than the thinner areas. So for the most part, that makes a lot of sense. Longer stitch lines tend to pull a little bit harder. If I have it going across this much, it's going to pull a little bit harder than if I only have it going across this much. So that kind of makes some sense. Um, if you want to deal with things a little bit more evenly, you may want to think about using pull offset. I find pull offset a little bit easier to kind of predict. So I'm going to take my pull comp back down and I'm going to go into pull offset. How pull offset works is whatever number you put in here, it will extend the stitch line on either side by that amount. So if I put in, I'm going to put something a little bit more noticeable in here than what I would normally do. I'm going to put 10. Uh, so it extends the stitch lines by 10 points on either side. So if I take my ruler and I measure from here to here, it is 10 points if I could be a little more steady on the mouse. All right, so that, that makes some sense too. Um, 
so pull comp affects the wider areas far more quickly than the thinner areas. Pull offset affects everything fairly evenly. All right, so let's uh, look at kind of combining some of these things. So I'm going to take this back down to zero. The one right below this is a max pull comp. Another way that you can deal with it is you can say, I want um, to do something completely over the top. I'm going to do 150%. And that's just going to really take that out there. And maybe you want to restrict that by a specific amount. Well, I can put five points in here. And once it hits five points, it will stay five points all the way around. You could do more than that. So we could even do 20. So it, it does it as a percentage, does it as a percentage, and then once it hits 20, it stays 20 all the way through, and then it goes back down. Completely up to you how you want to use this. Uh, again, pull comp, wider areas get affected far more quickly, thinner areas less so, pull offset, everybody gets affected evenly. Now, you do also have the option of unlocking X and Y. So if I do that, I can affect the pull in one direction more than the pull in the other. So if for some reason you were dealing with something that stretched way more in the Y than it did in the X, you can unlock those. I have yet to meet a material that did that enough that I've unlocked them. Um, I have had um, some, some coworkers and uh, some customers say, you know what, I needed to do this for this really weird material. and that that completely works. That's what it's there for. Um, I typically leave it locked. It's up to you and your application which you want to do. All right, so I'm going to go back to locking that. Um, so we understand the concept of pull. Um, it will help uh, if you're outlining a fill, it will help that fill line up with the outline that happens afterwards. So in this case, let me delete this vector line because that's not real. And uh, we'll, we'll just put a border around here real quick. And I did that using a, a change element type uh, shortcut. Um, so let's change this color. There we go. Um, so if I wanted to do something just by looking at it, I might choose to change my pull offset until those stitch lines end up almost at the edge of this. So I could even do a little bit more if I wanted. There we go. And that would work out fairly well for me. So that was the idea behind pull comp and pull offset. Now, uh, as, as you've noticed, this tends to extend stitch lines. That's what it was meant to do. Um, but you can also use it in a slightly less conventional way in that if you have thinner elements that you want to make look a little bit uh, thicker, a little bit bolder, you can do that using this tool. Same thing to make your small lettering look a little bit bolder, a little bit um, heavier in weight, you can do that using this tool as well. So let's go in and we will create a new document. I'm going to create uh, just a little bit of lettering here and I will make this lettering out of Diane script. Now Diane script's an older alphabet. Uh, it has a good amount of thick thin play. If I, if I look at my specifications, it says that it can go all the way down to 0.35 inches tall. So let's not take it quite that far yet. Let's just take it down to a half an inch. And when I do that, let's zoom in here and let's look. And what I really want you to look at, yep, it's right there, is this area right in here. And you'll notice that uh, my stitches are starting to get kind of farther apart. Not really sure what's going on there, except that I know that because I've been doing this and I know the settings, um, my stitches are getting filtered out. So what's happening is Design Shop's looking at this design and it says, okay, these are so small that I need to start filtering out every other stitch so that instead of having your stitches this way, they start elongating, getting farther apart, and that will hopefully get you through the design without a thread break. So basically when I see that I'm starting to filter out stitches like this, I know, okay, I need to go in and I need to make that thick enough to sew. How much? Well, 
I'm going to measure, and we'll do a little bit of math, sorry, and then we'll make it work. All right, so what are we measuring? Well, I'm going to grab my uh, ruler, and I'm going to measure across the form, kind of where it starts to kick out, and it is five points. All right, five points. That is not a lot. In fact, um, that's not even the diameter of my needle. The diameter of my needle typically is between a seven and an eight point wide needle. So when I'm sewing, I like to keep my stitches bigger than that. I like to keep my stitches around a 10, maybe even a 12 if I'm just starting out. So I need to do a little bit of math. All right, I'm gonna do this a couple of different times. I'm gonna do this using pull comp, and I'm gonna use this doing, uh, I'm gonna do this using pull offset. So let me duplicate this. I'll move that up here. And let's duplicate that and move it down here. So I have the original, and we'll do this one using pull compensation. So when I measured, I measured across here, I knew that it was five points wide. I need it to be at least 10 points wide. So five times what percent equals 10? Well, that's 200%. So I'm going to apply 200% pull compensation to this lettering. And now if I measure across here, that's 10 points wide, that's thick enough to sew. So I know that I can get through this fairly well. All right, now, unfortunately my M starts to kind of mush together and my letters start to kind of mush together a little bit. So maybe there's a better way. Since it's affecting the wider areas so much more quickly than the thinner areas, and what I really want to address are my thinner areas, I may choose to use, in fact, I almost for sure would choose to use pull offset. So let's go in here, right click, go to properties, and I'm going to use uh, pull offset instead. So I knew that it was five. I needed to be at least 10. So if I add one point to either side, that's five plus one on one side, one on the other, that's seven, not enough. If I go to two, five plus two on one side, two on the other, that's nine, that's not enough. I'm gonna go up to three, hit apply, and okay, this is now thick enough to sew, but my letters aren't really starting to squish together. My M has a lot better definition than it does on the one above. And so that's really gonna to start to work out a little bit better for me when I'm dealing with my really small stitching. All right, so here's the original, a little too thin to sew. I'm starting to filter out stitches on the inside of the E. Um, that's not gonna work. So then here we've got pull compensation where it's affecting the wider areas much more quickly than the thinner areas and it's making my thick thin play a little squirrely. And then below that, we've got pull offset instead, which is affecting everything evenly and giving a much uh, kind of smoother, much more even uh, kind of sew out. Now there is one other tool that you can use with this. I tend to use it as a troubleshooting tool. Uh, if I right click and I go to properties, we also under pull comp have the ability to set a minimum column width. So if you're dealing with something like this and you're not sure if this is your problem but you're getting thread breaks and you think it might be because your columns are a little too thin what you can do is go into your minimum column column width and say whatever you do don't go below this amount so you can put that amount in there and then as it goes throughout if it sees that it will stop getting narrow and it will stay at whatever your minimum is set to so that's pretty cool why don't i always just set this to 10 if I don't ever really want to be sewing below 10. I can, I can handle a point or two, or pardon me, a stitch or two that goes below that if I'm coming to a point like at the end of the M or at the end of the O. Well, if I make everything uh, kind of stay above 10 points, and that's how I address this issue, the tops, my M's get squared off, the ends of my M get squared off, and it starts to lose that thick, thin play um, that made this typeface such a lovely and calligraphic typeface. So 
Uh, I will often use this for troubleshooting. I will often use it as kind of a band-aid to get through a design that I'm not super familiar with. But um, if it's something that I really want to work on and, and get really good results, typically I will go in and I will use pull offset to kind of achieve that. All right, so there's kind of four examples. One that probably wouldn't sew very well. One, uh, the rest of them would sew well, but what look is the most uh, appropriate for what you're doing? And so, I, again, I tend to go towards that pull offset um, that's going to affect everything evenly, so that's definitely the one that I would choose. All right, let's go back in and let's look at, not with that tool I'm not going to, uh, let's go back in and look at the properties that we have left. So um, we've dealt with pull comp, pull offset, max pull comp. Um, we also can specify a maximum column width. So um, if you never want to go above a certain amount, um, you can set that. That's not something I typically do. Um, if my elements go above that amount, I, I'm not super worried about it. So zero is what disables that. So if you put a zero in there, you've got that. The other option um, that you have is uh, you can enable small uh, column pull compensation scale, which means if you get around this amount, go ahead and give it a little bit extra. Um, and so that only affects where it gets really small. Um, I tend to, again, go in, measure, and I use that pull offset um, to, to keep everything kind of within uh, the realm of what is able to be sewn and uh, affects everything fairly evenly. But you've got a lot of tools um, to compensate for the pull of stitches, to make smaller areas sew better for you. Um, just go in, take a look, and uh, realize the tools that you have to be able to adjust your designs to sew really well for you.